back again and he takes us to our home in heaven where we'll never grow old there'll be peace for every man in that sweet and cheerful land and every night will be a silent night every night will be a silent In Luke chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Matthew 1, 21 says, She shall, talking about Mary, she shall bring forth a son, and it shall call his name Jesus. For he, Jesus, shall save his people from their sins. You know, there's only one way to be saved. We talk... People that's not in church, they don't understand what we talk about being saved, being born again, all these things that we say. But the Bible simply teaches that we must be saved from our sins. We're all sinners. We've all sinned. I'm a sinner, you're a sinner. All that sin that comes short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us not only do we celebrate a birthday, but we celebrate a Savior. You know, at Easter we celebrate here, we have our our sunrise service and we celebrate a risen Savior. Our Savior came, He lived, He walked here, He talked here. We just, what a great lesson this morning in Luke, how He raised the dead, He healed the lame, He gave sight to the blind, all the miracles that God did while walking on this earth. And He's still doing them today. People that have belief and have faith, we see it and we know that and it happens. He has the power to save us and He also has the power to forgive us of our sins. I don't know about y'all. I, I, I live as clean as I can and I'm, I'm filthy when it's in God's eyes. And I'm your pastor. We all said, I need forgiveness every day. I need forgiveness. We all do. We need a way to be forgiven and cleansed from our sins. The Bible says He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what He came for. That's what God sent His Son here for. Not to be a baby in the manger, not to be the beaten, crucified cross on the cross. He had to go through that, but He came to save sinners. He said Himself, I, I, I came to seek and save those that's lost. And we were all lost or been lost at one time. He forgives us of all of our sins, cleanses from all unrighteousness, and gives us the victory. Vern, Vern shares a lot of times in his testimony, there's only one victory, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Not only that, 
He gives us peace in our heart. He gives us joy in our heart. We got people sitting in here today and I've experienced a peace that's unspeakable. And my mother passed away, there was not no hurt at all. I, all of a sudden, God just came over me and gave me peace. Right in the middle of one of the worst things in my life, losing my mother and standing in a hospital with, with a doctor and nurses and all the equipment right there, and boom, 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 and they say, you know, my mom's gone. But that peace that people don't understand, Cheryl experience with her son, Terry's experience, there's a peace that, that comes through that salvation, through Jesus Christ. There's so much that we think about the gift and we think about the baby in the manger and we think about the Christmas and we give gifts because the wise man brought gifts and all this is all good. We do that. But today I want to preach about a Savior. I want to preach about Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about in the first place. And we get we get wrapped up in the, the Christmas spirit and that's okay. But I want to stay focused on Him. I want to stay on the main thing and that's Jesus Christ. We spend a lot of time on, on celebrating. We get our trees up, we get our lights up, we get our yards up, we have our Christmas parties, we make the cookies, we have the family dinners, we do all that. Decorate and have a big celebration. And all that's fine, that's good, I do it. We all do that. But it's all about a Savior was born on Christmas morn. That's what it's all about, folks. Uh, we preach on things about the birth of Jesus. I, we were in the mountains a few weeks ago and the whole time that week before and that week I was reading the prophecies, the Old Testament, how they prophesied He's coming, the Messiah would come, how He would come, where He would come, who He was, what He would do. I wanted to preach on all that. But God didn't put it on my heart. He, he, he put me through it to go back and refresh my mind of everything that He said about Him in the Old Testament came true. And he's here. It's here today. And we we preach. If you listen, I listen to preaching. I get preached to too because I listen to other preachers. I listen to Bible studies and preaching. And it, and, and I, I'm I'm guilty of it too. Not guilty. We should preach at all. But we preach on. Uh, was there any room at the end? Make room in your heart. You know, we use all the scriptures to make our sermons and preach. And the wise man, if you're wise, you'll follow. You'll seek Jesus. You'll follow the light. And we preach on. All those things at Christmas, and I do too, and that's good. But sometimes we get to preaching on all that and thinking all that, and we leave out what it was all about, the main thing, and that's Jesus Christ being a Savior that God sent here to save His people. We preach about the fulfillment of the prophecies. I, I, all the outlines that I did, I would go, I gave, I think, Russell and Doug, old people, some of my notes, but you go all the way from Genesis 3 where our God said He would send somebody to, to crush the head of old Satan. It starts in Genesis. It goes all the way through the Old Testament how God said He was coming. And we know that He did come. And we know all that was prophesied. It came, everything prophesied came true. We preach it. We teach it. All these things are good and they're important. They should be taught and they should be preached. But let us not forget the main thing and that's He's the Savior. He come to save us from our sins. You know, we're separated from God. The Savior was born to save us from our sins. We were born in iniquity. We were born with a sinful flesh because of Adam and Eve. We're all sinners. We're all separated from God. I heard a great message this week that, you know, we need to be... Rec God don't have to be reconciled to us. God's always been where He's at. He's never done anything wrong. We're the ones that went astray, so we needed to be reconciled back to Him. And He loved us so much. John 3.16 tells us He sent His Son, His only begotten Son, here to die for us, that we could be reconciled, we could be redeemed, and brought back to Him. We're all sinners. The Bible says that. Romans 3.23 says we're all sinners. We all come short of the glory of God. 1 John 1 9. We just had Bible study in 1 John. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He, Jesus, this baby that was born in that manger that we're celebrating during the Christmas time, He's faithful just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. The one that we celebrate the birth of, a Savior, 
He can and He will forgive a sinner. If we, the sinner, will confess and humble ourselves down and realize what we are in the eyes of God. You know, a lot of people live a great life. They live... We've got all kinds of people in here. I'm not going to go there. Y'all have heard my testimony where I went through things. and We've got saved drunks in here. I don't know what all y'all do. God does and y'all do. But God will save you. But we've got a lot of good people that never done all those things. They've never been down the path I've been down. They've lived a good life. They grew up in church. They lived a good life. They've done all the things that they should do. They've been in Sunday school. They read the Bible. They put money in the offering plate. They may be a member of a church. They sing in a choir. They teach. But if they've never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, they're going to die right in the church and go straight to hell. He come to save sinners to, from, from that punishment, from going to hell. And so many people don't understand that. It's like getting a... It, kind of like getting a new car for Christmas not ever putting the key in and crank it up. You don't realize what you got till you get it. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing is Jesus Christ. It's we, we can talk about the wise men and I'll preach on them. I've got sermons in there right now. And I think a wise man will seek Jesus Christ. Amen. I really do. I think we get wisdom from Him. That's where we get our wisdom. I think that star that we talk about, I think that was... The, the light of God, the glory of God shining, drawing people, and the glory of God still drawing people to His Son because the Bible says, except God draw you to Him, you can't come to Him. I think God's still trying to draw people to His Son that He sent down here. That little baby that grew up and died for us. And I think we miss some of that during Christmas because we get wrapped up in the manger, we get wrapped up in the baby and the wise man and Mary and Joseph and all that's part of it. But we get the focus off of what came in that little baby that was born. He was a savior. He came. He he didn't really come. He did a lot of good work while he was here. That was in the lesson this morning. He healed the blind. He he gave blind people the sight. He raised dead. He made the lame walk, the dumb talk, the deaf hear, all the things he's done. But that wasn't the reason he came for. He just did that while he was here because he could. He came to save us from our sins. For unto you is born a Savior. A Savior. Why do we need a Savior? Because we're all rotten sinners. We don't like to hear that. You know, we used, when I was in church for years, we had a what we called a soul winning ministry. You know, we can't win souls. God saves souls. We can tell people about Jesus. I, I read preachers tell me, oh, I led all these people to Christ. I've never led nobody to Christ. I'll tell them about Jesus. God leads them to His Son. I don't take credit for it. I've had other pastors that I've related to it like the cowboys. A lot of us are old watch the cowboys. The gunslingers, when they shot somebody, they carved a notch in the, the old gun handle. You could tell them, Gunslinger back in the day had three notches carved and he didn't kill three people. I know preachers that they kind of like carving notch in the Bible every time they think they save somebody. And that's why a lot of unsaved people that think they're saved are going to die and go to hell one day because of what the preachers told them. Charlie mentioned that about Scripture a while ago, what God does. You know in your heart, you know you're sitting in here today, do you know in your heart right now if you're saved or not? You can be fooled the biggest deceiver in the world, Satan. And his biggest trick is to make you think you're saved so you'll die and go to hell believing you're a saved person. Amen. We've seen it happen in this church. We've had two or three people in this church in the short time we've been here to get saved that thought they were saved for many years. One of them sitting back there today. But the Bible says neither... You know, we're talking about Jesus. I want to stay focused on who I'm talking about. Jesus. A Savior. In Acts 4, verse 12, it says, the Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. There is no other way to be saved from your sin. And no sinner is going to go to heaven. God's a holy God, and God don't have communion with a sinner other than His salvation to save them. No other name 
except Jesus. No other way except Jesus. No other way to be forgiven of your sins except through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Talking about the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that He made for us. God's gift to the world. We celebrate that at Christmas. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall what? Believe. Believe. In Him should not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. That word perish still bothers me. I don't know if y'all have ever known anybody or been anywhere where somebody burned in a fire. That's, that's a terrible thing to ever have to go through or, or hear of or anything, but that's what it's talking about. And it's not, you know, we think about people now, they burn in a fire and they burn up. And, and their earthly life dies, but their soul lives on somewhere. But when you talk about hell in the Bible, that's an eternal damnation. That's what perishing means. The Bible says that you'll go there if, you, if your sins are not forgiven, if you've not repented, and ask God the Savior to save you. That's where eternity is going to be. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace, this is the good part of the Bible, folks, right here. By grace. Whose grace? God's grace. God's grace. God and His love, He loved us so much. And even while yet we were sinners, He sent His Son here. He sent that baby here when I was a drug addict to die for me. Not because I'm up here preaching today. When I was as rotten as I could be, He still died for me and He died for you. While we were yet sinners, He died for us to be our substitute. But for by grace, God's grace, are you saved through what? Faith. You must have faith to be born again. I'm up here preaching. The Bible says what I'm doing is foolishness to those that don't believe. But to the one sitting in here that's been down that road I've been on and been born again and actually accepted Jesus Christ, that gift that God sent, it's not foolishness to us. It's not foolishness to Don. It's not foolishness to David. It's not foolishness to Charlie. If you've been there and you've been born again, it's not foolishness no more. We want all y'all to hear it. That's what God called me to do, preach the gospel, and the gospel is salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. I get my focus off of Him sometimes during Christmas myself, and He brought it back today. But by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That's something that a lot of people think they can go to heaven by their own works. They think they can be saved if they do good. Well, I'm going to stop cussing and I'm going to stop gambling and I'm going to start drinking. I'm going to stop doing drugs. I'm going to start committing adultery. And I'll get in there one day. No, you won't. No, you won't. You don't get into heaven by what you do. You get into heaven by what God does. Sent His Son here to die for us. That's what Christmas is. That's how we get into heaven. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, the rest of that verse, it is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. We got all these gifts over here. We got gift banks for all y'all. Gift for these children. We got gifts. You'll get gifts at home. Y'all give me gifts. We got all these gifts, but the greatest gift that you'll ever get is a gift from God. Amen. A gift from God. God's grace and His mercy. And you know what? I think about, thank you, Lord. I think about them little boys, my grandkids here. Birthdays, Christmas, Robert and Carter's here. They get all these things, and the first thing they do is run to daddy or papa. You got a knife, you got to cut them. They, they tie things up now where even adults can't get in them, so the kids. And they want to get them open, they want to get get in there. And it takes some work, and it takes some. But I think about that verse. It's by faith. By grace are you saved through faith. You got to have faith. To get in other things, you got to have water cutters and saws and chainsaws and everything else. But you got to have faith to get that gift. But you know the good part about it? The Bible even says He gives us that. Right, right. He gave to each one of us a measure of faith. Yep. Enough faith to believe what you're hearing today was given to you by God. That's part of that gift. That's what He sent to us. 
In verse 9, Ephesians 2, 9, it says, Not of works, lest any man boast. Charlie, I'm going to talk about you, and I, I, I may be wrong. Charlie was a deacon. He's never shared this story. He just told me he was a deacon when he got saved. I'm sure if he was a deacon, he was a faithful church member. He was studying the Word, and he was doing just like you are right now in the church. And I don't know how it happened. He may share with us someday. But somehow through all that, in his heart, God, that God that loved him so much and loves us, he told him it's not real. It's not real. Something in there made him realize it. You can be, you can be the pastor. I can be up here preaching and realize I'm not saved. If God, if so be it. I, I, I feel sure about my salvation. But I've heard of preachers getting saved preaching. I heard of one preacher preached his own salvation. I, I did have his CD. He had a testimony. He preached one week and his, the preacher's wife got saved. That would be like me preaching and Denise come up here and get saved in front of the church. He said I was humiliated. The very next Sunday he was preaching. He realized he wasn't really saved. And he got born again. After he'd been preaching, I mean, been preaching about 10 or 12 years, wasn't a new God. And he got saved by his own preaching. You know, the devil can trick you. He's a master of it. He'll deceive you. He don't want you to get that gift. It's like these, you know, somebody's getting a gift, somebody wants to steal them. People stealing gifts out of cars and out of the mail all, all the time right now. Somebody's not going to get that gift because somebody stole it from them. The devil will steal yours if you're not careful. He'll take that. God's gift to the world. Not by works. You can't, you can't earn it. You can come to church every Sunday, every Thursday. You can put $100 in that bucket every time you come. You can buy food for the hungry. You can do all those things you want to. But if you've never been born again, Nicodemus came to Jesus in the darkness. Nicodemus was a wise man. He was seeking Jesus, but... He didn't pay much attention, evidently. He came to him and he said, how, how can I be in the kingdom of God? What I must do? He said, except you be born again, you'll never see the kingdom of God. And he walked away because he didn't want to humble himself. You know, the hardest part for a person to get saved is, is to humble yourself and just tell yourself. And I was in a church, a preacher was preaching. I was on my way to party as well as I can remember. I was there because my mom and dad was begging me to come to church. That preacher preached. It was the first time after hearing all the preaching I heard. Something he said, what he did, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit told me, you're going to die and go to hell without me. You're going to die and go to hell. The only way you can escape hell is with me. That's that gift I'm talking about today. That was through Jesus. That's the night I got saved because I realized God talked to my heart through the Holy Spirit and drawn me to His Son, Jesus. And I went up and I accepted Jesus. And the Bible says, No man come to the Father except by how? By Jesus Christ. That little baby that came down here to get me. That's how you do it. But you have to believe. You have to have faith. You get faith through God. He gives it to you. If you're here today and you don't know about your salvation, I want to challenge you. Today is the day. We're not promised another day, folks. We're here today. I'm sure we all got planned Thursday night. We're going to have, have our little shandy day at Christmas time. We're going to sing. You're going to go home today. I don't know what y'all doing today. I'll go home, have dinner. The grandkids, the kids are coming over. That's my plans. I may not be here for that. I may not walk out that door today. You know, I could fall down right here, right, right now. God could. One, I'm one heartbeat away. You are too. One heart. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to tell you why Jesus came here. That's right. Before Amen. it's too late to be saved. One heartbeat. Boom. I could hit the floor. That's right. But you know what? That don't scare me no more. No. I got that peace and I got that joy that come in that gift of Jesus Christ when He died on that cross for me and I understood the gospel and I accepted Him. I got a peace. I don't worry about dying. The only thing I think about dying is my kids and my grandkids and y'all crying and missing me and things like that bothers me. I think about how hurt I've been when 
Now, my loved ones is left, and I know it'll hurt my children and my grandchildren. And all for a while, they'll go through that season, but God will bring them through it. And I don't worry about dying because the Bible says to be absent from this old body right here is to be present with Him. Yep. That's why I love that song Thursday night we sang in here a lot. What a day that'll be when His face I'll see. He takes me by my by the hand, walks me through the. You know, I shared this the other night. I, I had a little experience. I, I know it's just my mind. But we were singing that song Thursday. I asked the ladies to sing, What a Day That'll Be. I think I showed that with Don and maybe Terry. But I was up here and I just closed my eyes and I was just praising God and I was listening. And in my mind, I could say, My mom. See, my dad. What a day that's going to be when we get to heaven. All of us that's lost loved ones, they're going to be there. Oh, we're going to see them. I'm going to see Jesus face to face. Praise God, that's the one. But we'll see them. God promises, promises us that. That's what He came for, that little baby that we're celebrating a birthday. It's more than a baby in a manger. It's God in the flesh. It's a Savior. The one that loved us so much, He wanted to save us from our sins. You know, we can be as good as we want to be. We'll never be good enough to get into heaven. you got to be born again. you got to be saved. Uh, have you ever accepted God's gift? I'm going to challenge you today. Have you ever accepted Him as your Savior, your Lord and Savior? We all know Jesus. We all know the manger. We all know about the baby Jesus. It's right up here in our head. We've been taught it. We've heard it. We've read it. We've watched it on TV. But it's a whole different thing, folks, when it gets in your heart. When it gets right here, it's a different thing. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, you believe in your heart, not in your head, but in your heart. Make it real today. Make it real in your heart. Are you truly saved, forgiven? Have you been cleansed? You know, I know people right now that tell me they're Christians. They're trying to quit drinking. They're trying to quit cursing. They're fighting the toughest battle in their life. They're, they're, they're so confused. They say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. And they can't quit none of it. And I tell them, Give it to God. You know, I did drugs for 13 years. The night I got on my knees and asked God to save me, I asked Him to take it away from me. I've never done another one since that day. Never wanted another one. Amen. Never wanted one. And I know believers out here, so-called believers, they can't quit the things that they know they shouldn't be doing because they don't have God in them. If God's in you and you ask God to help you, God's going to help you. Amen. Right. I, I went through a struggle just trying forgiveness. That's one of the hardest things in the world for me as a Christian to do. If you wrong me, I'm supposed to forgive you and forbear you. We had an experience yesterday at the landfill, and I just kind of shunned it off. And I was wanting to say things, and I I was trying not to think things that I would have thought 20 years ago down there because I was angry. And I just let the Lord have control, and it, it worked out all right. But what I do, and it's not no big, big prayer, I just say, Lord, help me on the inside. If you come up here and you're you fussing at me, if they come up here and start just cussing me out and ridiculing me in front of y'all, and y'all be all, oh, Lord, you shouldn't do it. And I won't be standing there on the inside. Jimmy's wanting to punch him and get him, just get out of the face. And I'm saying, Lord, help me. Jesus, help me. That's what I got in that gift package I got. He gives us that. He gives us those gifts. There's gifts of fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to speak on that in a minute. He, without Him, you know, I've been told by people, you're a good man. Some of y'all told me that. My wife told me I was a good man before. And what a compliment. And you know what I tell them? Nothing. The only good in me is Jesus Christ. My daughter's life, she knows I'm not. But I say, all the good you see in me is through Jesus Christ. Jimmy was a mean man. The old Jimmy was a mean man. Old Jimmy used to fight and do all kinds of things. He enjoyed it. He thought it was fun. I was just redneck as you could be back in the day. Uh, but God changed all that. That little baby we're talking about. Jesus. He came to save me from all that stuff and change me. 
You know, when you get saved, you become a new creature. Yes. You're a new person. You'll never be the same. You can be as good as you want to in here and be lost. You get saved, you'll be better. You'll be better. All those things you struggle with that you can't change, God can change them. And He will change them if you ask Him. Are you truly forgiven today? You know, you can know that. You can know that. I struggled many times in my younger years as a Christian about my salvation. And I prayed one day. I, I prayed to God and I said, Lord, I believe everything in that book. I know it's yours and I know it's holy. And I believe that you came here. And I believe you died. And I believe God raised you up on the third day. The Bible tells me if I believe that in my heart and ask Him and confess and tell Him I'm a sinner, that He'll save me. And I believed it all and I've done it. You know what the Holy Spirit told me? If I wasn't saved, I was calling Him a liar. I've never struggled with it anymore after that. But there's verses here. I want to tell you. In John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Hereby know we that we dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us the Spirit. You know, when you get truly get saved, you get born again, the Holy Spirit moves into you. Christ lives in you, dwells in you. The Bible says our body becomes a tabernacle. A dwelling place for God to live in. God lives in lives in me because of His Son Jesus Christ and when He saved me. And it says, verse 14, we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the what? Savior of the world. How can I testify about that? Because He saved me. And I know the Holy Spirit lives in me. Because everything that I want to do wrong, something in here tells me don't do it no more. That's the Holy Spirit of God guiding me and directing me and you if you're born again. When I want to cuss Tina out for throwing a book at me, the Holy Spirit says, you can't do that no more. You're mine. And we battle. The Bible teaches that this old flesh out here, old Jimmy, and that spirit we fight all day long. You cut me off in traffic, no more. Cut you off, but the Spirit says, you can't do that no more. You don't do that no more. Be kind. Love them. Pray for your enemies. No, I don't like that one. But we, we testify. And it says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. That You know, it's one thing for me to think the Holy Spirit, God lives in me. But that verse says that I'm in him. We, he abides in me and I abide in him. That's kind of hard to comprehend. We're walking around here with the Holy Spirit in there. We're walking around here with God. Charlie mentioned earlier, the Bible says we're two or three together in my name. I'll be in the midst of it. He's here today. He's in us, the believers. He's here. And we've known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. You know, he came. That little baby came and he died on the cross and he resurrected. He went back to heaven, but bless God, he left that spirit of God in him to live in us and we live in him. And there's nothing sweeter than that. First John chapter 5, verse 10, it says, He that believeth in the Son of God hath the witness in himself. There is something in here telling you right now if you're a child of God. There's a witness. That Holy Spirit will let you know that you are. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave his Son. This is a record that God has given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son, that little baby Jesus. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Talking about eternal life. These things I have written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. Not that you can guess or maybe, but you can know. It says that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name 
of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Have you ever believed, have you ever truly believed in your heart who Jesus really is? The Savior. The one that came to save us. We know because we've received the Spirit of God. He dwells in the believer. He dwells in us. He dwells in me. If you're a Christian, He dwells in you. You become a new creature. When you get born again, that, that's the greatest witness I look at when we have the opportunity to somebody in here that accepts Christ as their Savior. You know what I do? I start watching them. I start watching them. Because I want to see something change about them. Because if there's no change, there's no conversion. Because God changes you. You can't be the same person you was after you get Jesus. You can't be. He won't let you be. You'll, you'll go through struggles, but He guides you and He directs you. And He won't let you be the same person. You'll be different. There's a difference. He dwells in you. You have the spirit of love. You know, the Bible says God is love. Without God, we don't even know what love is. You get a different love in you. You can love your enemies. You can love those that, that don't like you no more where you did hate them. You'll help people that you'd have never helped before. That's what we do. Because we got a different thing in us. God says love others as I have loved you. That's without any conditions. It's easy to love people that love you. It's not hard for the natural man to love your enemies. But as a Christian, we can. We learn to do that through God's help, through His strength. We do that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. There's another way to check up on yourself. If you're here today and you don't know for sure, what kind of fruit do you have in your life? What kind of fruit? You know, a Christian, we, we, we got good fruit. We got real good fruit. We get the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us, and that's wonderful. I know Charlie was teaching not long ago, talking about the fruit, and you don't have an apple tree, you don't get pears off of an apple tree. You don't get bad fruit off of a Christian, you get good fruit. What kind of fruit do you have? Verse 20, chapter 7, verse 20, Whereby, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. See, other people know us. People know us what kind of people we are by the way we are. How do we treat? Do we love everybody? Or do we just love the ones that love us? Are we mean to our in do we, these people out on the street? Do we help them? These families that we're helping now, we could have said we're not helping y'all. You're not part of us. That don't matter. We help them anyway. That will we put in. Not part of us, but we spread the love of God and help do it anyway because we're different in here. There's a difference. We're different people. We're peculiar. Bible says we're peculiar. We're a peculiar bunch of people. You know, the normal man would say, well, I can't believe them people if at that church put that old drunk, spend $800 putting a well pump in a drunk house. What kind of church is that? It's a real church. Amen. What kind of it is? Yeah. You don't just help the brothers and sisters. You help anybody you can along the way. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's, that, that's some tough stuff. That used to haunt me. Every time I hear a preacher read that verse, it haunted me. Because I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. This is Jesus Christ. This is that little baby after he grew up and he was preaching. This is his words. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth, doeth the will of my Father, which is not know about it, but do it. It's one thing to know it up here, but it's another thing to get in your heart and do what God tells us to do. To serve Him and serve others and love others. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in? That's preach. We're all preachers. Have we not told people about Jesus? Have we not prophesied in our name and cast out devils, helped people get rid of demons, and done many wonderful works? We're doing a wonderful work, getting families food, those shoe boxes that went overseas. What a wonderful work all we this little church group's done. 
<coughs> we can do all those things and still be lost, folks. Still be a lost sinner. And in verse 23, these words are so hard. Then, this is Jesus. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, I don't want to hear that said. I don't want to, I want them to hear it's well done, not good and faithful servant. And the only way you'll hear that is by giving your life to Jesus Christ, being born into the family, accepting Him as your Savior. And when it's all over, and we cross that river, we're looking for that hand, that song I hold. What a day when His face I'll see, when I see that face. I don't like, I've heard preachers standing in pulpits, I don't care about this, want to get in. I, I don't worry about all that stuff. I don't care about that. I want to see the gold streets. I want to have them all matching. But most of all, I want my Jesus to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know, in my case, Jesus didn't have a whole lot to work with. He didn't have a whole lot to work with right here. But everything that's been done through me, the good, the preaching, and y'all come and tell me what a good man. All that him, all that, that little baby that was born in Bethlehem that night. In me, to you. You know, I heard a preacher yesterday, he was praying, fixing to preach. He said, God, you just preach what you want here. I'll open my mouth and you talk to him. That's kind of the way I am. That's the way it needs to be. If all the preachers would be like that, the churches would fill back up. We'd see a revival. We'd see something happening in this country. So many preachers are trying to teach it and, and their own opinions and their traditions and their, their denominational things. It's all about Jesus. Christmas, every day ought to be about Jesus. Amen. You know the fruit, what kind of fruit? The Bible says, in Galatians, I won't go there for the sake of time, but if you're a Christian, if you've really been born again, you've been changed, number one, you're going to have love. The Bible says charity, but love, love is the greatest of all of them. You're going to love people. You're going to love your wife different. You're going to love your children different. You're going to love everybody. It's going to be a different love than you've ever had. You're going to have joy in your heart. You know, there's a difference between happiness and joy. You can get happy, be happy right now, and be sad after you go home. But when you get that joy, now that joy don't never leave. Not the joy of God. You'll have that joy, a peace. You'll have a peace in your heart, regardless of what circumstance. You can be in the valley or on the mountain, but there'll still be a peace in your heart. You'll have that peace. You'll be more patient. That's one I battle a lot, long-suffering. The Bible says long-suffering, patience. We live in a world that, I've made that before. You used to, you go in there to cook, it takes 30 minutes on the stove, you put it in the microwave, it takes 30 seconds, and you, come on, come on, I got to go in 30 seconds. You can't even wait 30 seconds. We're all in a hurry, boom, boom. Got to slow you down a little bit. You know, I was down with my back there a while back, and somebody told me, you better slow down, preacher. A lot of people fuss at me and say, you need to slow down, you, need, you know. And somebody told me when I was down on back, so maybe that's God telling you to slow down. You better listen next time. That's right. Slow down, pay attention to what's going on. Have Be gentle, be good. Faith, meekness, temperance, kindness, compassion for others. Do we bear that kind of fruit? If you're saved, you will. Because that Holy Spirit that lives in you, that's the fruit it gives you. Not what we want to do, but it's what God wants us to do. If you're not, if you've never been saved, you can be saved today. You know, I don't do invitations in here and ask you to raise your hand if you're not and bow your head. I ask you to search your own heart. It's the only way I know how to do it. Search your heart. Search your own heart. We'll have a, a short invitation here in a minute. And as Charlie sings, whatever God puts on his heart, ask yourself. You know, only you and God know. You can fool me, you can fool your spouse, you can fool anybody, but you can't fool him. <coughs> it may be your day. Second Corinthians 6 2. The Bible says, I've heard thee in the time accepted. Maybe you've heard God speak to your heart today. 
And in the day of salvation, if I support thee. And the Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you're here today, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You could get the greatest gift. You get a gift that you'll tell people about the rest of your life. I've shared in here when I was a kid, I got a bicycle and everybody on Washington Street our two blocks knew I had that bicycle because I showed it to everybody. I still remember. <clears throat> but I remember more that night at Bethel Baptist Church when I got on my knees and asked Christ in my life and accepted Him as my Savior. It's never, that gift's never gone away, and it gets better. It's like that old credit card, the gift that keeps on giving, because it gives us grace for every day. It never gives out. It's a gift from God. It came in a manger for everybody that believes. Whosoever. I always say I'm so glad I'm a whosoever. Whatever that is, I'm one of them. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, But what saith it? The word is not to thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith. Maybe God's speaking to you today, right here the week before Christmas, which we preach, and I preach that. I preach the gospel. There's no other way. You can hear preachers tell you there's different ways to heaven. There's only one way, folks, and that's Jesus Christ. That's that little baby that come for us. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. People says that's too simple, preacher. That's why God made it simple, so you could understand it. So I could understand it. Believe in your heart. Not up here in your head. Believe in your heart. Believe this. Believe one day. We don't know that day. One day, just like He came in that manger in Bethlehem, He's coming back. He's coming back. The Bible, all in the Old Testament, He's coming. He came. He died. He done what He was supposed to do. Salvation was finished on that cross when He said it is finished. The work of salvation was done. The rest of it is believing and waiting on Him to come back to get His church, to get the bride. He's coming back. Could be today, could be tomorrow, could be another thousand years. We don't know. But if He comes back and you're not saved, you're going to go to hell. That's as plain as I can put it. You're going to go to hell. If you've been born again, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to be with Him. you you, you got a choice to make. And that's simple too. You want to live in heaven or you want to be... I'm in torment now, right here. Living in the world we're living in. I, I, I heard a preacher say this to an atheist or a lost person. This is the closest thing to heaven you're ever going to see. And to a believer, this is the closest thing to hell I'm ever going to see. This world is getting worse and worse every day. And praise God, I got a reservation. I got a ticket. I got a home. This ain't my home. I'm just passing through this place. Because I've been born again, I've accepted Him as my Savior. My life changed. I'm not the same man. If you want your life to change, if you're not happy with your life, He's the one that forgives you and cleanses you and makes a new creature out of you. If you believe in your heart, it says, I shall be saved. Verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto the 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 Scripture says, For whosoever believeth on Him, should not be ashamed. That's the problem. People's ashamed. You sit there, you may be sitting here today, and God may be dealing with your heart, and you're saying, I, that preacher's right. That preacher's right. I'm a lost sinner. If I don't do something, and God comes, I'm in trouble. And I ain't going to go in front of them people and tell them that. You know, I heard a great testimony. Chris Christopherson. Y'all know who that is, I'm sure. Singer and actor. Mm -hmm. He wrote a beautiful song, Why Me, Lord? What have I ever done to deserve even one of the blessings? But if you've ever seen it, he's got there's a testimony on YouTube. You look him up. And he tells a story about they went and did a, a, a benefit for somebody up in Nashville, near Nashville. And he's with 
a bunch of music stars and all that, they went to a church. A lady he was with, Dottie West, invited him to church. And he tells a story when they were doing it. He said, the preacher was preaching and said, you know, if you got things in your life, you need prayer. But he said, ain't no way I'm raising my hand in here. He said, next thing I knew, my hand was up. <laughs> it, it's really, uh, it's kind of funny to hear him tell it. He was telling it with a, on TV, but he said, then they told him if they needed prayer, come up to the front. And this is Chris Christopherson in this church. It'd be like him. He said, there ain't no way I'm going up front of this church. He said, next thing I know, I'm up at the front. <laughs> He said, I really can't explain what all happened in that place. He said, all I know, I was different when I come out. And that preacher come up and he said, I want to know if I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. He said, I didn't even, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. And he said, next thing I know, he had me pray. And he said, all I know, I was different when I come out of there. And I wrote that song, Why Me, Lord? He humbled himself. Not willingly, God, God brought him there. But that's how much God loves us. You may be sitting there today, and I'm not going to ask you to come up here. What I'm going to ask you to do is search your heart. You ask God, search my heart, God. Let me know if I'm truly one of yours. And if not, well, you don't have to come up here. I'll stay as long all day if we have to. We'll sit in there. I'll take my Bible and I'll show you over and over what the Scripture says. How to be born into the family of God. How to accept that Christmas present that God sent us on that first Christmas morning. Charlie, if you'll come, we're going to do a short thing. Search your heart. Ask God. Ask God to search. I'm going to ask you this right here. When I'm dealing with people one-on-one and they're not sure about their salvation, I've had people not, they, they'll tell me different things and I, God gave me this is the way I do it. It may be blunt but I just asked them if it was Doreen and me and Doreen's talking and I would be talking about her salvation and you know maybe she thinks she's getting sick and she's going to pass and she wants to be sure. I said, well, Doreen, are you sure in your heart if you died sitting right there in that pew right now, do you know you'd go to heaven? And you know the ones I've asked, I've had a couple say sure, but most of them I've asked, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I said, well, you can be sure. You can be sure you can accept Jesus Christ right now as your Savior and He'll give you that peace. Ask yourself in your heart if you've got that today. Ask yourself.